With this video I will cover the basics of operation on the carrier. Start up your aircraft as usual. Ensure the hook bypass is set to carrier. With the bypass set on carrier, your AOA indexer will flash if you are gear down and hook up as a reminder to lower your hook. Take a moment to check around the deck before taxiing. Increase your throttle slowly. Engage high gain nose wheel steering if needed and remember to ease yourself into turns. Too much power can result in you dragging your nose wheel across the deck and being unable to turn. Taxi toward the catapults. There are four on the ship, labelled Cat 4, 3, 2 and 1 respectively. When you are close to the shuttle, lower your launch bar. This will disable your nose wheel steering and you will have to hold the nose wheel steering button down in order to steer now. So do your line up before you lower the launch bar. Finish your taxi up to the catapult shuttle and press U. You will then be gently pulled toward the shuttle and attached. If this does not happen, you are too far away from the shuttle and will have to either get closer, or if you have overshot the shuttle and gone too far, you will have to turn around and attempt the lineup again. You may wish to bind this control to something directly on your controller. Once attached, press the take off trim button. You can then trim your aircraft nose up trim from this diagram, the checklist page and your FCS page, or you can just ignore it. Whilst it won't be ideal, you can probably get off the deck just fine. Lower your wings, wait for them to fully extend, and lock the fold lever with the mouse wheel scroll. Raise your launch bar, and lower your flaps to full. Check your controls. Run up your engines to 80% and check nothing has gone wrong. And when you are ready to launch, go full throttle and a few seconds later you'll be sent on your way. You should be hands off the stick during takeoff. The aircraft will automatically pull up for you, after which you can take control. If you fancy backseat driving your friend's landings, pressing left alt F9 will switch your camera to what's referred to in game as the landing signal officer camera. Note that track IR will still track when using this camera. I'd recommend pausing track IR. You can zoom the camera in and out with right control, slash or asterisk on the number pad. It is also worth noting that if you use NVIDIA Shadow Play, left alt F9 will start and stop recordings. I highly recommend you rebind one of these to avoid this problem. Additionally, the Hornet has a landing gear angle of attack indexer. If you have a look at the top of the landing gear you will see three lights on the nose wheel. These mirror the AOA indexer found inside the cockpit. So you can use these for reference when watching someone land. Getting back on the boat yourself, however, is much harder. I highly recommend checking out Jabber's video on the Case 1 carrier recovery pattern for full details on how to perform this properly. However, I will quickly go over some of the common mistakes and problems that people make for themselves when attempting to land back on the boat. I'm not going to claim that I'm very good at carry landings myself, but I will go over some of the basics. Now I'm afraid things are going to get a little bit technical here. AOA, or angle of attack, in simple terms, this is the relationship between the angle of your wings and the direction of travel. This is one of the most important parts of catching a wire, keeping yourself on speed AOA. This is shown to you in one of two forms. The AOA indexer on the side of your HUD. If you see green arrows, your AOA is too high. If you see red arrows, your AOA is too low. If you see the orange donut, your AOA is correct and on speed. The second method is the E-bracket on your HUD. Getting the centre mark lined up with the velocity vector will put you on the correct angle of attack. This is the most accurate way of measuring your angle of attack. On approach, your goal is to be on speed AOA and on the glide slope. The ball is what's used to guide pilots onto the correct position for the glide slope. This is a little light in the centre of the IFLOS station located on the port side of the ship. If you ever see a red ball, you are far too low. If you see a yellow ball, you're either just below, on or above the glide slope. Reference the green datum lines on either side. You want the ball to be level with them, ideally. The ball represents your position on the glide slope relative to the ideal position, shown by the green datum lights. 
When approaching, you will primarily be adjusting your throttle, increasing it for a low ball, decreasing it a little for a high ball, until you settle yourself at roughly the centre and maintain your glide slope. Don't worry about being high, make gentle corrections and ride the ball all the way to the deck. As you set up for your landing, make sure you're using the radar altimeter. Using the barometric one can set you up at the wrong altitude. Make sure your aircraft weighs no more than 34,000 pounds. You can find this on the checklist page. Slow yourself down to 240 knots, drop your flaps, landing gear and hook. Get on speed angle of attack by gradually lowering your throttle and using nose up trim to counter the nose drop until your velocity vector lines up with the centre of the E bracket. Use your trim here. Don't use your throttle to control your angle of attack. Reduce your throttle and speed slowly and ease yourself over into using pitch control once you're slow enough to be on speed. There is no magic secret to landing on carriers, however you must understand how to fly on speed AOA for the approach if you want to do this well. Use your pitch or pitch trim to change your angle of attack. Do not use this to steer the aircraft. Use your throttles to change altitude. As a result, you can push your velocity vector further away or closer to you, allowing you to adjust its position on the boat. Make roll corrections to get on alignment, but remember that large rolls will reduce your lift, requiring a little power to avoid you dropping. So let's go over some of the common mistakes. The carrier features an angled deck. The reason for this is to allow aircraft to land without the worry of ploughing into parked aircraft on the other end of the deck should you miss the wires. As a result, you will need to make sure you don't approach the aircraft carrier from directly behind it. Always come in from the right, then as you close in, turn into the angled deck. If you are doing an approach at night, make sure to contact the tower and state that you're inbound. Request landing clearance and they'll have the deck lights waiting for you. Aim your velocity vector into the crotch of the boat. This is the top right corner of the angled deck. This helps you account for the movement of the boat. However, do not focus on keeping the velocity vector there. Instead, your priorities should be checking the ball, checking the e-bracket, and then checking the deck lineup, and in that order. Don't worry about the velocity vector slipping away as long as you're in good for the ball and AOA. Just ensure you're not too badly out of alignment with the runway itself. This becomes more and more important the closer you get to the boat. The throttle takes a little while to respond, so when making corrections, don't wait for the response. Make the change, return to your previous throttle position, and then wait to see the result. Repeat it if necessary. Waiting for the aircraft to respond can lead to you dropping out of the sky as you wait for your throttle to spool back up again when you realise you are getting too low. You will never find the perfect throttle position either, so keep on adjusting it up and down to balance the aircraft. If you do an approach with your HUD caged by pressing the uncage button, you can't see the pull of the wind clearly. This can lead to you easily getting blown off course in heavy winds and messing up your lineup. Ensure that your HUD is uncaged once you begin your approach so you can clearly see the direction of your aircraft. Don't fixate on your instruments like altitude and airspeed. These functions are taken care of with the ball on the ship and your e-bracket. Use them instead. Know when to wave off. If you're close to the boat, too low, and have a red ball, wave off. Even if you do get back on centre ball with a burst of power, you'll have no descent rate left and will have to try and cut your power to plummet back on the deck, which is an awful idea. Ignoring the AOA indexer, or e-bracket, when coming in for a landing with too much or too little angle of attack will often result in bolters, even if you do land it amidst the wires. This is because of the relationship between the wheels and your hook. Too much AOA and the hook ends up substantially below the wheels, meaning it'll bounce hard as you hit the deck. To compound this, as it bounces, the nose of the aircraft will begin diving downwards as the wheels make contact pulling your hook away from the deck and those wires. Too little AOA and the hook may never be low enough to touch the wires at all, and it will skip across the deck as the plane touches down. Don't flare as you approach the deck, this will raise your AOA and make the hook bounce. Conversely, don't dive 
for the deck either. This lowers your angle of attack and is very dangerous, leading to a potentially heavy landing. Don't chase the ball over the deck. It's not uncommon to see the ball rise away from the deck as you cross the ramp, when your descent rate is too low. If you cut power now to try and correct it, all you'll end up doing is lowering your engine RPM too much, and in the event of a bolter, you won't have the power required to get back in the air. Instead, ride it out. Hope for a full wire and go around if you bolt. Use trim. Setting your trim for on-speed AOA can drastically reduce your workload for landings on both carriers and runways. Make sure you go full power as you hit the deck, even if you're confident of catching a wire. This is to ensure that if you do bolter, the aircraft will not end up in the sea. The wires have more than enough strength required to stop you. Use your throttle to control your altitude. As you increase throttle, the aircraft will naturally want to pitch up. Decrease power and it will pitch down, whilst remaining on correct AOA. Using your pitch controls here only damages your chances. Doing so pulls you off on speed AOA and changes your airspeed, which complicates matters because now you're changing multiple variables at once. And finally, don't use your brakes when you catch a wire. This will pull you over as the wire retracts. Once you are stationary, reduce power. Let the aircraft be pulled back by the wire. And shortly after you stop, raise your hook. Taxi off the runway and into parking. If you would like to learn how to perform a Case 1 recovery like the professionals, I highly recommend Jabba's Case 1 recovery video, which I will link in the description below. Remember that carrier landings are a bit of an art form. It will take you a lot of patience and a lot of practice. Take your time with it, and the best of luck.